How contract law works. Consideration. Consideration has been described as various things, the badge of enforceability or the price of a promise being among those. It is perhaps best understood as a benefit of some kind which is exchanged or given under an agreement. Consideration can be expressed positively, such as a promise to give something, or to pursue a course of action, or negatively, a promise not to pursue a certain course of action. The accepted definition comes from the dicta of Lush J, from the case of Curry v. Mesa from 1875. A valuable consideration, in the sense of the law, may consist either in some right, interest, profit or benefit accruing to the one party, or some forbearance, detriment, loss or responsibility given, suffered or undertaken by the other. This can seem a bit confusing, but essentially there has to be something of some value to one of the parties given in exchange for the other's promise. As Tritel has pointed out, with bilateral contracts, the most common type, we are dealing with two lots of consideration and not just one. Will you buy my car for £100? Yes, I will buy your car for £100. There are two promises here, and two lots of consideration. The first is party A's promise to give the car, and the second is party B's promise to give £100. This is what is meant by the rule that consideration must move from the promisee. There are, in effect, two promisees in the case of a bilateral contract, and each must provide consideration if they wish to enforce the contract. The rule that consideration must move from the promisee means that only those who have provided consideration for an agreement can sue on it. This should be read in conjunction with the Rules on Privity and the Contracts Rights of Third Parties Act 1999. There are two further general rules on consideration. Consideration must be sufficient but it need not be adequate. And consideration must not be passed. Consideration need not be adequate. It is not the court's duty to inquire into the value of consideration. This is an overhang from the days of pure freedom of contract. If one party has simply made a bad bargain, that is their problem. If there is no evidence of unfair practice or foul play, the court will not assist. In the case of Chapel and Nestle, three chocolate bar wrappers were held to be part of the consideration for the agreement, and in Mountford and Scott, one pound was said to be good consideration for a purchase option on a house. Vague promises, however, will not be held to be good consideration. A promise from a son not to bore his father with complaints was held to be too vague in the case of White and Blewett. Although consideration need not be adequate, it must be sufficient in the eyes of the law. It must have some discernible value. Can I buy your car for one pence? Yes. Performance of a duty already imposed by law, or performance of an existing contractual obligation, will not ordinarily be held to be good consideration. The case of Collins and Godfrey illustrates the point in relation to existing duties imposed by law. The claimant had been summoned to attend court as an expert witness, and tried to bill the defendant for his time. This was held not to be good consideration, as the claimant had been summoned as an expert witness by the court, and it was his legal obligation to attend, and therefore he had not provided any consideration. In Glassbrook Brothers v Glamorgan County Council, however, a colliery, coal mine owner, promised payment to the police to provide protection over and above that which was required by law. The police were held to have provided good consideration for the promise, since they were acting above and beyond their existing public duty to uphold the law. In the case of Ward and Byam, 1956, the promise to pay £1 per week to the mother of a child by the father, if the child was well looked after and happy, was also held to be going above and beyond the existing public duty. The rules relating to performance of an existing contractual duty are similar. They are well illustrated with reference to two seafaring cases from the 19th century, Stilke and Myrick, 1809, and Hartley and Ponsonby from 1857. At Stilke and Myrick, two sailors aboard a ship had deserted. The captain promised the remaining crew an additional payment if they sailed back home. The captain later refused to pay. The court held that the crew had not given any fresh consideration, since they were already contractually bound to put in extra work to cope with such events. The promise, therefore, was unenforceable. In Hartley and Ponsonby, however, almost half of the crew had deserted. 
The same promise was held to be enforceable in this case because the undertaking to sail back with half the crew was much more dangerous and therefore fresh consideration. Some other examples of where performance of an existing contractual duty could be seen as being good consideration are where duties are performed relating to a third party, such as in the case of the Eurymedon, 1975. The final rule of consideration that will be outlined here is a rule that past consideration is no consideration. The case of Marie McArdle illustrates this rule. Marjorie McArdle had, on her own initiative, carried out improvements to a bungalow that had been left on trust to her husband and his siblings. After the work was completed, they all signed a document agreeing to pay her some money in respect of the work she had carried out. It was held that the promise to pay was not enforceable. The work to the bungalow had occurred before any promise was made. It was past consideration, and therefore, no consideration. This rule is flexible, and there are exceptions to it. These were stated by Lord Scarman in Powon versus Lao Yu Long, a Hong Kong case decided by the Privy Council. The facts of the case revolved around one party's desire to acquire a building known as Wingon through the acquisition of shares in a company known as Shingon. Registered office of uh, Powon, trading as Shingon, was 274 Sha Soi Road, which is today a t-shirt shop. Lord Scarman recognised three exceptions to the rule that past consideration is no consideration in this case. The act must have been done at the promisor's request. The parties must have understood that the act was to be remunerated either by a payment or the conferment of some other benefit, and payment or the conferment of a benefit must have been legally enforceable had it been promised in advance. Lord Scarman went on to state that the modern approach to this area is contained within the judgment of Bowen LJ in Re Cass's patents from 1892. And now it's time for Rory Mayo's top tips. Rory Mayo's top tips. Although the cases of Stilt v Myrick 1809 and Hartley v Ponsonby 1857 indicate that performance of an existing contractual duty is not good consideration for a fresh promise, the case of Williams v Roffey Brothers and Nichols Contractors Limited 1990 established that where performance of an existing contractual duty results in substantial benefit to the promisee, this may be good consideration. However, in Re Select Move Limited 1993, it was held that this would not extend to cases involving part payment of a debt.